Hello everyone. Well, you can't see me, but you can see my cat, Borneo. Well, I'm Graham Beckett, and uh, I'm going to give you a talk today. I'm one of the YPJ leaders at Carey, and uh, I'm going to start off with a little something about a cat. Not this cat. This is Borneo, and he's a very friendly cat. We love him a lot, and she, he loves the fire. But we had another cat before. Uh, she was called Poppy, and she was very naughty. She used to run away a lot of the time, and sometimes she'd be away for two, three, four, sometimes even five days, and we would wonder where she was, we would hope she'd be all right. Um, and in the end, we found out that because she was a bit of a greedy cat, she liked to go over and stay with one of our neighbours. So she would stay there for a number of days and eat all the food that they would give her. Now she was a very naughty cat. She was a cat we had to chase around after. But as you can see, Borneo is very happy just to stay where he is. Well, just like our cat Poppy, who loved to run away, today's true Bible story begins with a hunt for missing animals. The story comes from the Old Testament, the book of Samuel, all of chapter 9 and the first verse of chapter 10. Where are the donkeys? They're missing, said the rich farmer. His name was Kish and he had a son called Saul who helped him look after the animals on the farm. Now Saul was a really tall young man. He was a whole head taller than everyone else. And I wonder how that made him feel. You know, I think most of us don't like to feel different uh, from everyone else. It can make us feel awkward and a bit like the odd one out. Well, perhaps Saul felt like that. He didn't feel very important and he knew he came from an unimportant tribe or family. But Kish said to Saul, take one of the servants with you and go find those donkeys. So they went and they searched for ages. They went through the hill country of Ephraim and around a place called Shalisa, but they couldn't find those donkeys anywhere. They went into the district of Shalim, still no donkeys. Saul was worried. It was all taking far too long. He didn't want his father to start worrying more about them being missing than the donkeys. But the wise servant who was with him had a good idea. He said, look, Saul, in this town, there is a man of God, a prophet called Samuel, who has a good reputation uh, because everything he says will happen, does happen. Perhaps he can tell us which way to go. Saul didn't know this man called Samuel, but he agreed to the servant's idea. Um, as they were coming up the hill, they met some young women. They were coming into a town called Rama and they met some young women who were coming to collect water. And they asked them, is the seer here? Now, prophets were often called seers because God showed them things which happened in the future. Anyway, the women said, yes, he's just ahead of you. Hurry up and meet him before he goes to the high place to eat. The, the people will not begin eating until he arrives and he must bless the sacrifice. So Saul and the servant caught up with the prophet Samuel as he was walking up to the high place. Amazingly, Samuel was expecting Saul. The day before, God had told Samuel that he would meet Saul. And in verse 16 of 1 Samuel chapter 9, God says to Samuel, about this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him, make him ruler over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people for their cry has reached me. Saul was the man God had chosen to lead his people the people, the Israelites, he would be their very first king. 
and would lead them to victory over their enemies. Well, when, Saul, uh, when Samuel saw Saul coming uh, towards him, God said, this is the man I told you about. And once Saul realised he had met the prophet Samuel, uh, Samuel said to him, go on ahead of me. We will eat together and in the morning I will tell you all that is in your heart. How amazing is that? God was making things happen. Do you think Saul was surprised that Samuel was expecting him? I think so. He must have been even more surprised when Samuel told him not to worry about the donkeys anymore because they had been found. How do you think he knew? Yes, that's right. God had told Samuel. You see, God himself is the great king of all his people, but he chooses leaders and sometimes kings to help his people live for God, to live in the right way. And we can see lots of examples of this, lots of leaders from earlier on in the Bible. Think of Moses, of Joshua, of Gideon, of Samuel, and now it's Saul. So what does that mean to you? If God is your king and you are one of God's people, then you and I really need good leaders chosen by God to help us learn about God and how to live for him. So Samuel now told Saul about the special job God wanted him to do. And he told Saul uh, that it didn't matter if he felt he wasn't good enough or that his family wasn't important enough because he was God's choice. And God's people, the Israelites, would want Saul to be their leader. As they sat down to eat, Samuel treated his Saul and servant like very important guests and put them at the head of the table. There were 30 of them all together, a big gathering. Samuel had known that Saul was coming all along, so he had put aside a very special piece of meat for him to eat and prearranged all this with the cook, all because God had told him what was going to happen. After the meal, they stayed overnight at Samuel's house and the next morning, Saul and his servant were up early and ready to get going back home. But Samuel had something important to do. He needed to spend some time alone with Saul. Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head. He kissed Saul and said, the Lord God has anointed you ruler over his inheritance. Now this was a sign which was used in those days and here it was helping Saul understand that he would be leader and that he was God's choice. I don't suppose he would ever forget that very special moment when oil was poured over him. Even today, God gives us leaders to help us. I wonder if you could think who they might be. This could be your parents, your guardians, perhaps teachers, your youth leaders, the ministers at the church. It's important that you respect them. If they are in charge of you and are showing you how to live for God, then God has probably put them there, especially for you. Saul went on to be king. And of course, we have many kings, queens and leaders today. But God is our great king. Always the same God is, isn't he? Forever. He's chosen leaders to help his people. And it's important that we listen to them and see how they live so that we can learn to trust in God and live for him like they do. So please pray for your leaders, that they will stay close to God and that he will make them wise to make good decisions. But perhaps you haven't yet decided to make God, Jesus, the king of your life yet. Perhaps that is something that you would like to talk to someone about. Well, if it is, why not choose a Christian you can trust? Perhaps a parent or a youth leader and ask them how to make Jesus king of your life. Thanks for listening.